Hi, this is your host, Apin Bhartia, and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Matthew Powers, tech evangelist at Coil. And today we are going to talk about the necessity of distributed computing in data science, which this, this discussion is based on the white paper that Coil wrote along with Linode. But before we go into that, uh, Matthew, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Great to be here. Before we get started, I want some background. So first of all, tell us a bit about Coiled and what do you do at company as a tech evangelist? Uh, yeah, sure. So Coiled is um, basically a, a very easy way to run Dask. Uh, Dask makes it very easy to run uh, computations on a cluster of computers. And as a tech evangelist, I'm trying to help people understand about how to use Dask and how to easily train their machine learning models. and hopefully make their life a little bit better because uh, to be honest, running data science analyses can be can be kind of tough. <laughs> now let's talk about this uh, white paper that Coiled wrote along with uh, Linode. Uh, the topic is of course, data science project and the role of distributed computing in the data science working environment. Uh, if I may ask you, tell us a bit about the white paper. What is it all about? Basically, when you're trying to train these big machine learning models on large data sets, it's really challenging. It's challenging from uh, a DevOps perspective, and it's challenging from a just getting your models to run on these large data sets. So the white paper is about, you know, we have these huge data sets. We want to train machine learning models to uh, further our business objectives. And how do we get these models to run on these huge data sets? Um, and Dask is a great solution to, to make that happen. Can you share what are the, some key highlights of this white paper? There's kind of two ways to scale uh, data science analyses. You can scale out, which is kind of scaling to a variety of different machines in a cluster environment, or you can scale up, which is using all of the cores on your existing machine. Um, so we talked about how Dask can be used to scale up and scale out our analyses. And Obviously, you can only scale up to the size of you know the, the cores on a given machine, and then once you hit, hit a certain limit, that's when you need to use a cluster of machines and start distributing the, the computations. Um, so it's really talking about how you can scale your analyses uh, using Dask. Um, of course, Dask interops very well with NumPy and Pandas, but you know NumPy and Pandas, you, you hit limits, uh, and that's when you need to start using technologies like Dask to, to start training your models. Right. And if I may ask you for Dask's point of view or from this paper's, white paper's point of view, uh, when we do talk about uh, data science, AI, ML, deep learning, doesn't matter what term you use. Uh, of course, the, traditionally, there are data scientists, you know, but a lot of, you know, in, now engineers are also using this, you know, uh, IO ops are there. So who would you say is kind of, you know, the target audience for this white paper? I think the tar target audience for this white paper is really anybody who's looking to do advanced analytics. So like Dask interops with a lot of different technologies. Um, so even if you want to do like a cluster of GPUs, for example, Dask is good for that. Um, if you want to just scale out your your pandas or numpy analyses dask is good for that which is and that's more just like your basic data frame analyses so good for data engineers uh, as well um, and then obviously if you're running into if you're running you know kind of scikit learn type models and you're having trouble scaling those dask that's good for that too so it's it's kind of a wide audience i would say it's definitely like definitely more data scientists but also data engineers um, there's a lot of overlap between the two, as you know. <laughs> right, yeah, things are uh, everywhere these days. Uh, you uh, talked about, you know, one of the challenges, what, you know, scaling and that's where you need clusters. If I can also ask, you know, can you also talk about what are the typical challenges that data scientists or data engineers, as you said, face when they do deal with this, you know, challenge of scaling and they, they do have to go across clusters? Yeah, so... It's it's kind of it's really tough being a data scientist because it, you have all you need to know all the statistics you need to know all the math you need to know the models and then you need to you have this huge DevOps uh, and scaling stuff and it, it's kind of interesting because data scientists don't usually care about the DevOps and th this low level details they want to 
just they want their models to run. And it's it's unfortunate because they need to spend so much time on this, thinking about this. So I'd say that a lot of times uh, a typical data scientist, they'll be training something on their local machine. It'll work maybe. And then the data size grows. And now the model takes eight hours to train. And they don't have any sort of iterative workflow where they can do this experimentation because it's like impractical because it takes eight hours. And then they can't do their job. So being a data scientist is kind of painful uh, unless you're using the right tools, <laughs> to be honest. Now, uh, once again, you mentioned workflow. So uh, can you talk about you know the workflow challenges that data scientists or data engineers face and how this distributed computing solves that? Basically, it, it's kind of interesting, but one of the main workflow challenges a data scientist face is getting their environment set up properly. Um, installing the right software is really hard, uh, especially now that some some people are using different uh, machines with different chips. So just getting all the dependencies set up properly uh, with GPUs and C++ and all the, these things, that's that's tough. Then you need to think about running the, uh, executing the commands, if that's gonna be locally or in the cloud. And then you need to think about provisioning cloud-based resources, or if you're in an HPC environment, how you're gonna use all the cores of your machine. So data scientists have a, a ton of workflow challenges uh, before they even get to the model training part. I mean, that's even before they wrote any code, <laughs> so. If you look at the white paper, is I want to ask you is that how critical are iterations because you mentioned iterations and the speed in data science and why is that? So I'd say iteration is is very critical uh, when it comes to data science because it's a lot of experimentation, right? Like you're just looking at the data and you're seeing what works. You know, I don't, you're like I don't know what works. I need to check which variables give me results. Um, so in order to run those experiments, you need some like fast iteration times. And if, if your model takes eight hours to run or 10 hours to run or even 30 minutes to run, that's pretty painful. Um, so you, you really do need a, a setup where you can train your uh, model and get some quick feedback and then tinker and then train it again and then see which is gonna give you the best results. Um, so I'd say it's like, it's kind of interesting. I've seen this where it's like, if your model takes a few hours to train, it just dramatically decreases the data scientist's productivity. We also learned in this uh, white paper that parallelism and distributed systems support data science at a scale, and scale was the challenge that we uh, were discussing earlier. Can you tell us more about that? Basically, a data scientist wants to be able to run their computations on a big cluster of machines. And they don't want to think about the underlying uh, communication between the machines or how the tax, tasks are being allocated to different machines. They just want to run these computations and then have the underlying framework manage all those uh, low-level details. So basically what DAS does is it's going to take the instructions from the, the data scientist and then split it among all of the machines in the cluster and run the computations in parallel. The data scientist doesn't need to think about that. Uh, and that's, you know, that's a classic abstraction uh, and it's critical for data science because they have so much other things to be thinking about which is like how to make the best model for the business <laughs> since you have been this uh, industry this uh, space for so long if I ask you uh, uh, what are the trends that you're seeing in data you know science or data engineering space because uh, it will be fair to say we kind of live in a data-driven world without you know all the analytics. Whatever we are doing, most of what we are doing it won't even matter. We are also moving a lot towards automation. Uh, in security, also AI MLs are playing a big role. So talk about uh, what kind of changes you are seeing where the adoption is growing. Yeah, I mean, so at least for me, the reason I got into this data world is because I think that's the future, right? Like businesses that want to get more profitable, the way they're going to do that is with data and training advanced analytics models and then deploying them to production. Um, so certain trends I'm seeing in this industry are version data. Uh, that's a big one. You know, just managing the data and managing your data warehouse, querying it in an effect, effective matter, uh, that's hard. And you really want a fixed version of your data 
So when you're training your models, it's not your results aren't being conflated by the new data that's being added. Um, that's one trend I'm seeing, so version data. Another one is getting better at productionalizing your models. Um, that's like ML ops. Um, and of course, training models and giving data scientists environment where they can be productive. I think that that's, that's a big one because there are a lot of different places you can train your models, but if you don't like that environment and you're not productive, it doesn't matter. Uh, and that's, that's part of the reason why I joined Desk is just because I feel like it's a very productive environment. It feels very Pythonic and data scientists like that. They, they feel comfortable in the desk world. So that's why they're, they're happy to be building their models there. You talked about data warehouse. We also hear a lot of discussion these days about data warehouses versus data lakes. They have both you know, their own capabilities and also limitations. But what are the trends that you're seeing where people are moving more towards? Uh, because also one big challenge with data is when you're putting in analytics is that you cannot move that much data around. So once you get some data somewhere, so so can you talk about that also? Or is that not uh, something that you worry about too much? Yeah, I actually, I think about it a lot. You know, I'm seeing a big um, trend towards people storing data in Parquet files um, in cloud-based storage systems. And that's great, but then Parquet files have limitations, like they're immutable and stuff like that. So let's say you have some GDPR compliance stuff and all of your data stored in Parquet files, and then you need to delete certain records. That's actually a surprisingly expensive operation with, with Parquet Lakes. Um, so, we're seeing these trends towards things that solve certain problems. Uh, and then all of a sudden problems that were easy to solve with a relational database are really hard to solve with the new kind of, you know, parquet files in a, a cloud-based storage system. So it's interesting how uh, the industry is grappling with the, you know, we, we have new solutions that are more scalable, but then they can't solve what, what used to be a basic problem, <laughs> which is deleting a few records. <laughs> Matthew, thank you so much uh, for taking time out today and not only talk about, of course, your own journey, about the company, also white paper, and also share your insights on where you know, we are moving with data in the data-driven world and the challenges that data scientists or data engineers whatever you call them, <laughs> the rules are changing, evolving. Uh, but thanks for the insights and I'd love to have you back on the show. Thank you for your time today. Thank you so much for having me.